Hey everyone, it's Lisa Mears here. Thank you so much for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to be making an acorn shaker card using some of the new products from Pretty Pink Posh's fall release. So let's go ahead and take a look at the products. This is the acorn shaker die set. This die set measures approximately three inches wide by three and seven eighth inches tall. And you can use it to make an acorn shaker, but you can also use it to make an acorn without it being a shaker. And I'm gonna show you how to use it to make a shaker today. I'm also going to be using the layered fall wreath stencil. This stencil is a two layer stencil, which will stencil a wreath onto your card with those beautiful fall leaves. And I'm also going to be using the sentiment strips for fall stamp set. And this stamp set has lots of different fall sentiments and you can use the coordinating dies to cut them out. And I love these dies, they were released last month month. They're all rectangular in shape. Some have scalloped edges, some have a fishtail edge. They all have stitching on them and they will cut these sentiment strips out. So I'm going to start with the layered fall wreath stencil and I've already cut my cardstock to four and an eighth by five and three eighths and you can see when you're making an A2 size card, you can use this stencil so that it is positioned with the long side of the cardstock on top. You can actually get that entire wreath shape on your cardstock. But if you turn it around with the short side of your cardstock on top, that the wreath will be cut off a little bit on the sides. So if you wanted the entire wreath to display on your A2 size card, you would have to turn your cardstock the other way. But I'm gonna be making my card with the short side of the cardstock on top because I don't care that the entire wreath is not going to be visible. Now you can always use a stencil to make a square card. The stencil is six by six inches, so you can always make a square card that's five and a half by five and a half inches as well. So the layer A stencil is the one that consists of all of the leaves. I went ahead and locked that into place with my magnets and I'm going to go ahead and use my inks to ink it up. I am using scrapbook.com hybrid inks for my stencil and the ink that I'm starting with is the pear ink and I went ahead and inked up all of the leaves on that stencil. And next I'm coming in with a little bit of a darker ink. This is the succulent ink and I'm just inking up the bottoms of those leaves so that my leaves have the light and the dark green which adds more depth to those leaves. Next I'm coming in and I am inking up all of the berries with a red ink. This is the carnival pink ink from scrapbook.com and then next I'm going to ink up one of the largest fall leaves on this stencil in the orange cream ink. So it's a very light orange and I'm going to color all of those larger leaves the same color and I'm after I ink up the entire leaf with the orange colored ink, I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of a heavier hand on some of the edges of those leaves, again, to add some more depth to those leaves on the cardstock. So next, I'm going to take out a yellow ink. This is the rubber ducky ink, and I'm going to ink up a couple more leaves on the stencil. And I didn't want such a bright yellow on my leaves, so I'm coming in with a brown ink. This is the gingerbread ink, and just adding a little bit of brown on the edges of those yellow leaves. I'm going to add the carnival pink ink to some more of the leaves on the stencil. This is the same ink I used for the berries. Again, I'm coming in with a very light hand to color those up. And then I'm gonna come in with some of the gingerbread ink and add a little bit of that brown on the edges of those red leaves. Next, I'll add the pear ink to the remaining leaves, coming in with a very light hand. And then I'm just going to go over uh, the edge of those green leaves a little bit darker to give them some more depth. And again, if you wanted to use a darker green ink, that would work as well. And now I'm just making sure that all my leaves are inked up. I'm just coming in with some of the same colors and adding ink to them because I see that I did miss a couple. 
So I'll go ahead and remove that stencil and then I'm going to line up the next stencil. So this next stencil has all of the stems and for the stems I'm just going to color them all in one color ink and this is the gingerbread ink. It's a very light brown ink. So when I finished I realized that I didn't have my stencil far enough up on my cardstock and I have this little white gap at the top so my leaves are not flush with the top edge of that cardstock. So how I'm going to fix that is I'm just going to reposition the leaf stencil and then just come in with my inks and just add some more ink to those leaves so that the ink extends to the top edge of that cardstock. But you can also use your paper trimmer and just trim this down a little bit more, but I didn't want to do that. So that is how I'm going to fix that. So when you do add your stencils to your cardstock, just make sure that the stencil is far enough over the top edge of the cardstock so you don't have that issue. So let's go ahead and move on and work on the acorn shaker. So I die cut my acorn two times, once out of a light brown cardstock and once out of a darker brown cardstock. And I'm going to use the top of the darker brown cardstock and the bottom part of the lighter brown cardstock to make my shaker. So first I'm going to go ahead and use some brown ink. This is the gingerbread ink from scrapbook.com and just add some ink along the edges for some more depth. And I'm going to add ink to all of the pieces that I'll be using. There are some stitching lines on the top of this acorn that I'm going to add some more ink to and I'm just using a q-tip to add that ink on to those stitching lines just to add some more depth to that as well. And if you have a smaller detailed blending brush it might work better but I didn't have any on hand so that's why I chose to use the q-tip and it worked just fine. So next I'm going to take the outline part of the acorn and I'm going to glue it onto a piece of acetate. And then I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to trim the acetate away from that outline. So this piece is going to be the piece that holds all of the shaker pieces inside of the acorn. So that acetate is going to serve as the covering that holds them all in place. Next I'm going to place the solid brown bottom piece of the acorn directly on my card panel and I'm also going to place the top of the acorn there too. I'm just doing this to make sure I have it in the right position before I glue it down and once I have it where I want it I'll go ahead and glue that solid piece directly onto that card layer. And then I'm going to take some foam strips and I'm adding the foam strips to the back of the acetate piece. And I'm just going to put the foam strips right along where the cardstock is. Do not cover the acetate window, just right along the edge where the where the cardstock is. And make sure that your foam strips are connected on all sides so that your shaker pieces do not fall out. So next I'm going to add some of the confetti mixes right on top of my card panel, right over top of where that bottom part of the acorn was glued down. So I am using the Pretty Pink Posh Matte Gold Mossy Green and Espresso Confetti Mixes. So I'm having three different colors in here. So I just want to make sure they're all positioned within this bottom part of the acorn and then I'm going to peel back the adhesive backing from the foam strips and then I'm going to place the piece of the acorn with the acetate on it. I'll place that right over top of those shaker pieces to keep them locked inside. Next I'm going to take the top of the acorn and I'm going to add some foam strips to it. And the reason I'm doing this is because I need the top of this acorn to have some dimension or some height so that it is the same exact height as the bottom part of the acorn. Otherwise if I don't add the foam strips it's going to be added flat to the card and it will kind of look a little bit off because the bottom part of the acorn has dimension and then the top part would not. So I'm going ahead and adding the foam strips and just cutting off any of the excess foam that I could see from the front and then I will go ahead and take off the adhesive backing and add that to the card. 
For my sentiment, I'm going to stamp out the sentiment thankful for you. And there are so many different sentiments on this fall sentiment strips stamp set that you can choose from. I'm stamping it out onto white cardstock with some black ink, and then I'm going to use one of the coordinating dies to die cut the sentiment. And then I will add that sentiment to my card, and I'm going to put it so that it is flush with the right side of that card layer. I'm going to add that layer to a piece of brown cardstock that I cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I'll add that to an A2 size card base. And off camera, I do tie a bow with a piece of twine and I add it to the top of the acorn. So here is my acorn shaker card. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, please check the description box of this YouTube video for product links. And I always appreciate when you use my links because it does help support me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And thanks so much for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.